today through LDB as a Rust embedded database. We learn how to do parametrized create SQL statements, select statements, update with a merge command, and the delete by ID. And all of that using the Sura LDB data store execute API with SQL, session, variables, and the strict flag. Okay, let's start coding. If we go to our cargo to ML, we're going to use our Sura LDB. Make sure to use the latest one. You can turn off the default features and select just the memory database if you wanted to. But in this code example, we're going to use everything. Then we're going to use Tokyo for our async and anyhow for the convenience of the error handling. Now, if we go to our main.rs, everything has been prepped. We have our serial DB data types that we're going to use today. The B3 map, which is used by the serial DB data types. Anyhow, and then we're going to silence some of the warnings, such as we remove some of the noise when we explore. We make sure that our main is async with Tokyo. And then we're going to do our cargo watch dash quiet dash clear dash execute run dash quiet. We press enter. And now every time we save, we get a super clean print. Let's close the left, the top. The way we get started with SurelDB is by creating a data store. New, and today we're going to use a memory data store. It's going to be await. And if we mouse over the new, we can see that we can have a memory data store, file-based data store, or a TIKV remote data store. And eventually you will also be able to connect to a remote SurelDB. Then next, we're going to create our session, which is a little bit our namespace. So it's going to be session for DB. You give a namespace, myNS, and then a database name, myDB. And now we're ready to do our first create statement. It's going to be very simple. We're going to do a let SQL. And for now, we're going to align all of the values within the SQL statement, which is not a best practice. And then later, we will do it the better way. So first, we're going to do a create task colon one. So task will be our table name and the one will be the ID that we are providing. If we don't want to give an ID and want the SurelDB to create one for us, we can remove the colon one. But for now, we're going to add it. Then you set your columns. And for example, we're going to have title task zero one and for example, priority 10. And now to run the command, we're going to get a vector of responses. And the way you run it is with the data store, execute, we're giving our SQL, the reference of the session, then we're going to set known as variables, we will see later how to use variables. And then the last one is a strict mode, which for now we're going to set to false, meaning that if the table task doesn't exist, it will create it on the fly. That is obviously a sync, so we do our await, and now we can print our result in debug mode. Press save. And we have our responses. So if we toggle the inlays, we can see that it returns a vector of response, which is why we have the little bracket over there. And then each response, you have some data, and eventually you have the result, which is an array of object. And the objects have the data that we have. So in this case, we have ID, which is of type thing, which has a table name and the ID number that we gave, the priority, which is a number int, and the title, which is a string. Obviously, we can call that multiple times. So for example, we're going to add a task to, change the title, and put the priority to five, for example. Press save, and we get our response. Obviously, we shadow the response, so we're getting only one, which is our task two. And so now is a good time to learn how to do our select. So the select is very simple. We do a SQL, select, start from task. We're going to copy paste the execute command. We're going to print it, debug mode, press save. And voila, we have our two responses with the ID one and the ID two. Now, as we've talked at the beginning, we can go and remove the IDs that we provided for each of these rows. And if we press save, we're going to see that SurelDB created its own ID, which is kind of a unique string like that. So usually that is probably the way you will do it. Now, inlining the values part of the SQL string statement is kind of an anti-pattern, kind of lead to other issues later on. And SurelDB supports parametrized SQL queries. So we're going to do that. 
such as everything is going to be very tight and robust. So first we are going to do a little bit more prep. We are going to create a type alias, which is just going to be the tuple. And we're going to replace these two lines by those two lines. And just a way to have our DB as a single variable, which is a reference of the tuples. And then we can unpack it into the data store and the session. And since both are references, we can now remove the at session that we had. Press save and everything works the same. So now let's create our create task function. So it's going to be an async function, create task. It's going to take our DB that we are going to unpack into data store and session. We're going to take the title, which is string, and the priority, which will be i32. And then for now, we're just going to return a result of void. We're going to see later how that can return the ID. And now the SQL command is relatively the same. It's going to be a create task. And now the keyword is content. So rather to give the columns one by one, we're going to give a bitry map. And we do a dollar data. And that will be our parameter names, which is used by content. So now what we can do is we can create our data, which is going to be a bitry map of string and value. So value is a type of serial DB, which can have multiple subtypes. It's an enum. So we can do the pattern here of using an array with into, which will take an array of tuples with a key. So the key will be title into, and then the value title into, which will be translated into a value. And then the next property will be our priority into, and then our priority value into, which again will be translated to a value type. Press save to make sure everything works. And now we can create our vars. So we're going to do a var that is going to be a bitry map of string value. We're going to use the same pattern with the array into. And this time there's only one, it's going to be our data. And that is the name that we have over there. And then we have our data into. And that is a bitry map that we've created over there. And so the into would translate it into a value type. Press save, fix the spelling. Now next, we're going to have our responses and we're going to do our data store, execute the SQL session. And now we're going to do a sum of our vars because we have the variables. We're still going to do strict false because we want to create the table if it's not there. It's going to be a wait, press save, everything compiles. And in Rust, when it compiles, we are 90% there. So we're going to take our create, go back up, remove these lines, and do a create task, db, task 01, 10, await. And we're going to do the same thing for the task 02. We're going to put 7 this time. And then we're going to press save. And voila, we have the number 7 over there for the task 2. So all of the data is over there. So before we do the modify, we need to simplify the way we get the records, the results from the responses. And in fact, when we do a DS execute, most of them will return one response. So even if we have a vector of responses, the first one is where the data will be as an array of objects. So what we can do for these cases is we're going to create a function which is going to return a result of an iterator where the item is a result of objects. And it looks a little bit heavy, but it's actually relatively simple. And with these two result, you have everything you need to handle your exceptions. So let's create our function. It's going to be a function into iter objects, and it's going to take our responses, which is going to be a vector of response. It's going to consume it. Then it's going to return the result of iterator. But for now, and this is a little trick I like when I'm developing code that has many types, we're just going to return a result of void. And that will allow us to press save as we walk along without having too many errors. And then at the end, we just replace the types and we're going to be happy. And now, the first step is we're going to extract the result of the first response. So we're going to do a res equal our responses into iter next. So that will be an option of response. And then we want the result, so we're going to map it to the result. So now we have an option of result of value. And the value is a value type array. 
Now, the problem here is we don't really care about having an option of result. It would be better if we have a result of options, such as we can fail early if there is no result in the first response. And luckily, Rust has it covered with a very cool transpose, which is going to swap the result and the option. And so now we have a result of an option, which is what we want because we can just add question mark. And we have the option of a value, so much simpler. Press save, everything works fine. And now we want to return our iterator of result of object, which is the array over there. So to do that, we're going to match on result. And there's going to be two cases that we care. First, if the result has something, and if this something is an array, that's the only thing that we care about, then we will return the iterator. So we're going to mark it to do for now. And then the second one is anything else which is if there is no result or if the result is not a value array. And in this case, we're going to return an error. We're going to use anyhow. In production code, you will probably use more structured errors, like this error or error stack. But anyhow is great when you do unit test or code exploration like that. Now, if we press save, we have a little error because the to-do doesn't give enough information for the compiler to find these ducks. So let's implement the to-do here. So we want the iterator of item of result of array. So let's put it inside the variable it, and we're going to do an array into iter. We can consume it, obviously, and that will return an into iter value. Now we're going to map it on the value for each value, and we're going to match on v. And here there's two cases. First, if the value is an object, then we are happy. So we're going to return OK object. And then if it's anything else, then it shouldn't be, because the record should be of type object. So we're going to return an error, use anyhow, and say recall was not an object. Now we're going to press save. We still have the error below because we're not returning it, but if we check the type inlays, we can see that it is the implementation of iterator item result of objects. So we got it. So now we're just going to do a OK it. Obviously we could put the OK over there, but this way it works as well. Press save. Everything compiles, and the only thing we need to do is to remove the OK and the semicolon, go back up. We're going to take the result. We want to return, replace it, press Save. Everything compiles. We are 90% there. We're going to take our into it there, go back up, and then we're going to do a for object in into it objects of our responses, question marks, and then we're going to print our record, and the object has a nice string formatting, and then we do the object, and then we do not forget to put the question mark, because the object variables is a result of object. Now, if we press save, we get our two record very nicely formatted. And then obviously, because the object is a deref on between map, you can do a get ID. In this case, we're going to do the debug. Press save, we'll get the ID option over there. So that is pretty cool. I'm going to go back to our record. So now that we have that, we can actually make our create task a little bit better by making it returning the string, which will be the table name colon the ID. And now we can just take the result. We're going to do the into iter object, our question mark. We're going to get the first one, and then we're going to transpose it because the next returns option of result, and we want result of options. So now we can use a question mark. And now the transpose return option of object, which is great. And now we can do and then on the object. And we're going to get the ID. So it returns an option of reference of value. This is why we use and then and not map. And what we want is a string. So we're going to map it one more time to ID to string. And now we have our option of string that comes from the and then closure. And now, obviously, we want to fail if there is no ID. So we're going to do an OK or else. And then we return our error, no ID returned. And then we can remove this OK, press Save. And then that's it, 90%. Go back on top. We can have our T1, T2. And we're going to print our T1 and T2. Press Save. We have our two IDs over there, which match those. Let's remove that. And now we are all ready to do our update command, 
And in fact, we are going to use a merge command. So here's how it works. We do a let SQL update, and our variable here will be a $th, which is a thing, which is a table name colon ID. And then we have our merge command with the data. And then just for sports, we are going to return the ID. So that is a convention I like. The mutable commands return the ID. But obviously, you can return the whole object if you want to. So now I'm going to spare the typing, but the same principle. We do our B3 map of string and value. We have our title. We are just going to update the title with updated. And then we are also going to add a new property that wasn't there before, which is a done with a value true. The cool thing about SurelDB is you can add properties like this on the fly. So now that we have our B3 map, we are going to create our vars, which is our variables. And we have two variables, the th, and we are using the SurelDB function thing to pass our tid2. And that will make sure that it has to be well formatted. And then we have our data that we just created above. And now that we have our vars, we can do a data source execute, SQL, our session, our variables. And here we're going to put strict because we want to fail if the table is not there. And then obviously we do our await. Press save. And then that's it. We have our task two updated, the priority seven that we didn't touch, and our new property done equal true. And that's pretty cool. So obviously if you press again, save, it would change the order because there's no guarantee of the order because we didn't do our order by in your select, which obviously you can. Now, just for the CRUD completeness, we are going to do our delete and very simple, just the delete, dollar sign th, th stands for thing. And then we're just doing a vars with our th value. And then we're going to delete the t1. And then obviously we have the same into strategy. And then we do our ds execute, SQL, session, our variables, true as well, and the await. Press save, and voila, we only get the second task that we updated, and the first one was deleted. You can find more comments on the SurelDB website that you can implement exactly the same way with the REST API. And that will be it for today's episode. Until next one, happy coding.